Hey guys, Mike Ford at Back to Balance here. Uh, today I want to talk to you about plantar fascia. Uh, now, you might have heard of plantar fasciitis, more commonly known as a pain in my heel, a bruisy feeling on the bottom of the foot, spasmy feelings on the bottom of the foot, general tightness, and there's a lot of symptoms that describe this syndrome. Uh, ultimately, it leads to not being able to walk very well, bruisy feelings throughout the whole of the, the foot, the low leg, the heel, it can sometimes lead to numbness and tingling in the foot, uh, definitely difficulty in movement, loss of function, uh, sometimes the worst is in the mornings. So if any of these apply to you, there's a chance you might have plantar fasciitis. I entreat you to just come in and get it checked out. Let's go over what causes it in most cases and what you can start to do about it. Now, plantar fasciitis, a bit like other inflammatory, um, I don't want to say disorder, syndromes is the best word, is where the body starts to pull blood in a certain area and it starts taking up the space of all sorts of other important functional tissue. Right. You know, you could imagine if I had 100 balloons and I inflate a few of them, suddenly they're not stretchy, none of them work quite so well and I'm more likely to get something popping. Now, if you imagine a long chain, elastic bands if you will, going right down from the lower back, even higher up actually, but let's start from the lower back, coming right down through the back of the leg, through the back of uh, the knee, back of the ankle, wrapping right round onto the bottom of the feet. Now, that is what we call a chain of tension in the body. Now, that means that if any part of that is very tight or gripping hard, the other parts of it will have to deal with that in some way or another. Now, if I, for example, got loads of tension in my lower leg, what can often happen is my body doesn't pump all of the blood back up, back up through the leg and out of the foot, it should. This can slowly lead to ankle swelling, can lead to swelling, as I say, on the bottom of the heel. And that immediately causes pain symptoms, right? You will touch it on the floor and it will feel like you're touching something sharp. Now, the best ways to deal with this are not necessarily resting it, although putting your legs up in the evening is a great idea, but actually moving it. So things like standing on your tiptoes, uh, constantly moving the feet. You know, this is most often suffered by people that work behind a desk or work in some stationary position. That way the blood gets a chance to pull in these areas in the bottom of the foot and into the ankle. Uh, and that will be the thing that will lead chronically into the build up of pain. So movement, standing on your tiptoes, stretching. Now there's a couple of muscles through there. I'll use the technical words, but do come see us and we can give a bit more of a better description. But the soleus and the gastrocnemius are two of the bigger muscles concerned that often can transfer that tension into the heel and the bottom of the foot. Uh, stretch those, the hamstrings, you know, anything down the back of the body, even the glutes can sometimes help a lot. Uh, I would definitely recommend either going to see a personal trainer that understands about plantar fasciitis or getting some exercises from us. Uh, it's very important to be dealt with, otherwise it can sometimes be very immobilizing, causing back pain, hip pain, you know, all sorts of other bits because you're just not moving quite so well or quite so regularly. So get in touch with us, plantar fasciitis, huge strain and inflammation down the bottom of the legs and into the feet. Um, if you've got any questions, ask them in the comments and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Cheers. Mike, out for now.